What does that even mean, Bowers Game Carnar? Oh, and there, YouTube, I'm back again today for another game review, another special expansion review. And today I'm very excited to be checking out Star Realms Crisis, the Fleets and Fortresses expansion. Fortresses from White Wizard Games. Uh, this is a micro expansion. I believe it's only going to come with, uh, let me do math, 12 cards in there. Uh, we're going to be going over the 12 cards, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on the game. This is obviously not a standalone game. You will need a copy of Star Realms to play this. So let's open it up and check it out. All right, then. We're going to be checking out what you're going to get inside of Star Realms Crisis, the Fleets and Fortresses mini expansion. And in this expansion, you're going to be getting uh, two cards of each color. Well, you're going to be getting three cards of each color. You're going to be getting two ships for each faction and then one base for each faction. We're going to go over all the different things you're going to get in the deck. So first one, we have the Patrol Bot. It's going to cost you two. Uh, and this one is going to let you either get two coins or deal four damage. And if you have another red one, on, you can stack on top of it. You may scrap a card in your hand or discard pile. So not, not a bad one to start off with right there. Next, you have the Border Fort, which is going to cost you four. It's going to gain you a coin or two damage and also let you scrap a card in your hand or discard pile. So that's going to be a cheaper base that you can set out. Like, normally you got those bases that's going to let you scrap stuff, but they're really expensive, like your six, seven, and eight. But this is going to be, you know, one that you could potentially get early on in the game that could really help you out in the long room if you decide to focus on red. Moving on to the yellow cards, we have the Cargo Launch, which is going to cost you one and let you draw a card. Uh, it doesn't sound that appealing at the beginning, but at the same time, you know, if you can stack this up with some other yellow ones, potentially unlock some secondary abilities just by having these cards in your hand, they only cost one. If you got an extra dollar, I definitely don't th see why you wouldn't grab these cards. They're going to have two of those. Next, we have the Star Fortress. It's going to cost just seven, big bad seven. It's going to do three damage just for being out there. You're going to draw a card and then discard a card, which is kind of neat. So you're going to be able to pick a card up and then get rid of one of the cards out of your hand that you don't want. And if you have another yellow, you're going to be able to draw another card and then discard another card. So if you were... Uh as long as you don't have, you know, everything cold out of your deck, that could be a really good one to have out there. Also, it is an outpost, which means uh, six, so they're going to have to deal six damage before they can even touch you. Next, you got the Customs Frigate. It's going to cost you four. This one is one of the more intriguing ones, I think, in this one. You may acquire a ship of cost four or less and put it on the top of your deck. That's that's the special. That's the ability on this one. You just instantly get to do that. So that one is uh, that's really neat. But you need to pay attention to the ship part. It's not the base. We actually had that where somebody thought they could buy bases with them. Like no, 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 no. It's not that overpowered. Uh, but then also, if you have another blue card, you'll be able to deal four damage. And if you trash it, you'll be able to draw an additional card. So not a bad one at all. Uh, so then you're going to get the Capital World, which is going to cost you eight. It is an outpost with six defense, and oh, this one I really, really love. And whenever it comes out, I'm like, whoa, I'm getting that. Because every single turn you can keep it out there, it's just going to give you six health points and let you draw a card. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, moving on to the green, we have the Spike Pod. It's only going to cost you one. It's a cheapie. It's going to do... Three damage, and you may scrap up to two cards currently in the trade row. And let me tell you, this card is incredibly annoying when someone plays it against you. Like, oh, I'm saving up for that. I'm going to get that. They get that, and then it's like, oh, they just trashed it. Moving on to the final card, we have the Death World Blob Base, which is going to cost you seven. It is not an outpost, but it does have six defense. And it is going to do four points of damage. Also, you may scrap a Trade Federation Machine Cult or Star Empire card. What does that mean? That means you can trash a red, yellow, or blue card from your hand or discard pile if you do draw a card. So that is really kind of crazy. Um, really a unique card. But those are going to be the cards you're going to be getting inside of the Star Realms Crisis Fleets and Fortresses expansion. Alrighty then, Crisis Fleets and, Fleets and Fortresses, man, it's hard to say, from Star Realms, the Star Realms expansion from White Wizard Games, one of my final thoughts, go over the pros, let's go over the cons, uh, obvious con side, this is a micro game expansion, uh, a micro transaction expansion, which is going to bug some people, also there's nothing new or groundbreaking added here, there's a lot of cool abilities on these ships and bases, but there's no new mechanics or anything like that they're adding into the game, so if you're hoping for that, then I'd recommend going and getting their other micro expansion, the Heroes expansion, uh, which does add the heroes in there, which can definitely shake some things up. 
Other than that, I don't really have too much cons. You know what you're getting here? Moving on to the pros, I like this expansion an awful lot. And now that I have, I believe I have all the micro expansions, and I'm, I'm going to review all the micro expansions, I've got a chance to play with all of them quite a bit. I still think Gambit is the best, even though it's not technically one of the micro expansions. I like that one a lot because it adds the, um, what is it add? It adds the, the cooperative and the solo variant, which because I'm a big fan of co-op and solo. And I like the Heroes expansion a little bit better than this, just because it actually adds a new mechanic, which I like a lot. But, this is by no means a bad expansion, and you can't go wrong getting any of these expansion packs. A lot of these special abilities are really, really cool. Real quick, I'll just go over my thoughts on the, the different ones. The Spike Pod, the one that's going to let you scrap two cards in the middle. I personally never get this one, but it really annoys the living heck out of me, and I'm sure someone has a strategy out there uh, based upon these cards. They're really interesting, they're dirt cheap, and I like dirt cheap cards a lot. Moving on, we have the Death World. This is one I really like quite a bit, because a lot of the time what I'll try and do is I'll try and get like two red cards, and then just focus on green and just, you know, get rid of all the coins and the, the vipers or whatever, and then just pound, pound, pound. And this one also lets you get rid of those red cards once you don't need them anymore, uh, or get rid of some useless yellow cards. I like this one. It's versatile. I wish it was an outpost, but it's still not a bad one at all. Uh, Capital World is one. This is probably my favorite new card in this entire expansion, the one that has... Uh, that it's going to give you six health each time, each round. It's just going to give you six health. That is insane. And it's also going to let you draw a card in as a six health post. Doesn't make cost obviously, but it's still great. Uh, the customs frigate. That's one of my favorite new ones in this one as well. It's just a really intriguing card, and I do like to have. Uh, I do like occasionally do the strategy where you just buy tons and tons of those little two, three, four cost ones. And this one, just having those in your hand, allowing you to just get those cards for free, I like that an awful lot. That's one that I normally, if I see it, I always just instantly pick it up, just because I think it's a really cool card. Uh, moving on, we have the Star Fortress, the yellow base with the cost of seven and the six outpost. Uh, this one's really good. I like this one an awful lot, unless you draw the card and then discard the card. Uh, so especially if you're in mid-game, this is incredibly helpful. Obviously, once you get towards end game and you've kind of gotten rid of most of the stuff that you don't want to have in your deck, it's not nearly as good. Uh, but early game and mid game, I think that card is a really good one. Uh, Cargo Launch, the one that costs one and just lets you draw a card. This is one I always buy when I played with it, just because I'm like, why not? And you always have that extra coin here and there. You're like, yeah, why not just throw it in there? Um, it has unlocked some secondary yellow special abilities there. It just seems like the kind of card where if you have an extra coin and it's out there, I don't see any possible reason why you wouldn't buy the card. Uh, moving on to the last two, we have the Border Fort. Uh, the four cost one for the red. It's got the five outposts. This is one I really, really like. It gives you that kind of option where you can either hurt people or get the money, and I like that an awful lot. I also like that if you have another red card that you're playing that's going to let you scrap and discard, uh, scrap this one, you potentially be scrapping two at a time, so that's really, really good. And you know you love that feeling when you scrap two cards at one time, and you're like, oh, my deck just got that much better. Uh, last one we got is the Patrol Bot, the one that's going to give you the two coins or four points of damage. Secondary special ability is going to allow you to uh, scrap a card, obviously. Uh, this one's really good. I mean, it's just another great beginning of the game one. Having more cards like this that kind of speed up the game, I'm a big fan of. Um, you know, it's great. I like the fact it also gives you the option of doing damage. You know, you can potentially destroy those early outposts they might try and get, or getting the money so you can buy better cards. Uh, but that was the Crisis Fleets and Star Fort uh, Fleets and Fortress expansion. It's just great. I mean, if, if you love Star Realms, go get it. It's a no-brainer. Great little uh, expansion to Star Realms. Be sure to check out my link to Star Realms and then uh, my my other reviews of Star Realms and my other reviews of these cards. I'll probably release all of them at one point in, in a week, so it'll be I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. But in the comments below, let me know, do you like Star Realms? Why or why not? Nearly everyone I've talked to enjoys Star Realms, but I actually kind of want to hear from the people who don't like Star Realms. Let me know in the comments below why it does not tickle your fancy, because I am definitely intrigued by that. And as always, if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below, and thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for the Star Realms Crisis Fleets and Fortresses expansion. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. Fortresses. Fortresses. That's a hard word to say.